Welcome to Tutorial Tuesday. Today we're going to be learning how to stencil. I have a bunch of tips and tricks to share with you as well as how to prevent bleed through. And just a heads up, these tutorials are meant to be slowed way down. They are filmed as I go on a step-by-step -step basis so that way you can follow along with the easy instructions. For our demonstration purposes, we're going to be using these wood planks. You can pick them up from Dollar Tree and I wanted to make sure that I used something similar that you guys had access to. Now I will tell you that these things do smear a little bit when you like use watered down paints and acrylics and stuff. So this is a good piece for me to kind of show you guys the whole stenciling thing on. So that way you can see if it's working on here for me using these little tips and tricks and techniques that I'm going to show you guys that you should also be able to minimize the amount of bleed through or get your desired effects on the pieces of wood that you're using. In terms of stencils and what you can use to stencil, you can get Dollar Tree stencils. These all came from Dollar Tree. These are a little bit kind of flimsy. I'm going to talk about these in a second. This also, I'm pretty sure I picked up from Dollar Tree, if not Dollar Tree, Dollar General, but I'm almost positive this was Dollar Tree. And you can order tons of plastic stencils like this from Amazon, which... I get all the time. They're extremely inexpensive, really easy to use, and they're easy to clean up, even though I kind of got some bits where I got lazy here. But if I want to wipe these out, I'm going to show you how to clean these at the end of the video in case you do pick these up. I have people ask how you clean them. So I'm just going to show you at the end of the video. We're going to try and cover as much as I can about stencil basics in here. So it answers a lot of questions that I get all the time. With that being said, please keep in mind that you can also create your own stencils. My girl Sammy over Unicorn Dust Designs was kind enough to lend me one of her Cricut videos to put in the comments down below. If you guys have a Cricut machine at home and you want more information on how to print out your own stencils and how to create your own stencils and stencil with the Cricut pieces, you go right ahead. I am not a huge weeding individual <laughs> in terms of Cricut. I love Cricut, but it's just, it takes so much time for me and I just get frustrated with weeding. So I'm like, let's order some stuff <laughs> or pick it up at the store. And that's what we're going to use today. So first and foremost, I want to share these little pieces. If you pick these up at Dollar Tree, please keep in mind when you're doing your stencils. And if you have this down on something, and you go to try to think that you're going to heat this up to move your drying a little bit faster. Watch this. You see how the stencil is starting to pop up? Keep that in mind when you're using these particular type of material stencils, okay? The hotter they get, the more they pop up. So if you're trying to dry the paint that you just put on here, it's a good chance that it's going to get underneath of that and start to smoosh. So that is that. I learned that the hard way, unfortunately, <laughs> using these. But I do like these for in a pinch and they're inexpensive. I have used these several times, different things, and they just still, even if I'm going over this where it already has paint, I still get good results. This is one of the last men standing that I have around here. So I want to share this with you. These are already self adhesive. So you can actually buy these and they're already self adhesive. You peel them off, you pop them back down, plop them, plop them back down. But to be honest with you, I have had this sucker for at least five years. I, I don't know. It's been a minute. I've been doing this for three years about and I had this before I ever started YouTube because I used the set that this was in on a project in the house so it's definitely been over three years don't quote me on the five but look I mean it's still and I've washed the top of this several times and it still has its stickiness so you can purchase pieces like this that already have its stickiness or you can also buy the spray where you can spray the back of the stencils and pop it down. I have had not great results using that. So I have used other techniques, which we're going to talk about right here. And again, use these methods. I'm giving you guys options and trying to respond this whole tutorials to help you guys figure out what works best for you. There's no right or wrong way to stencil. 
Now let's talk about the things you can use to stencil. The only thing I don't have that we're going to talk about is a makeup sponge. And my local stores just don't happen to have any. I did look for some, but we're just going to mention them. However, you can use a regular sponge. Okay, this I just picked up from Walmart. And I use this to decoupage. These are also in my decoupage kits. You probably see them a lot in my content. When they get all crusty, musty, and filled with Mod Podge, I just start snipping them off, and then I use them to paint. You can have a little stippling brush. These are normally nice and flat like this and they're a little bit stiff but I love this one because even though it's a little stiff it's got some bend to it it's got some crusty bits extra in there too we won't talk about my <laughs> brush cleaning skills I was in a hurry okay listen okay next brush we got this one right here which I like using these depending on the project I like how it's kind of like See how it's rounded in the center? It's good for going like this in little swirling motions. Where this one I feel like is better to go pounce, 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 pounce. A little tappity tap, tap, tap. And then, of course, trusty little pouncer pieces. And then one you guys may not know about that I'm about to show you is some foam. This is just some craft foam, okay? So let me show you how to make a little pouncer piece out of this. Because I'm just being lazy and don't feel like going and finding <laughs> a little circular dowel. We're just going to snip the ends off of that. Okay. So you can get a regular dowel, any little thing. Oh, look how cracked that sucker is. All right. All right. Oof. Okay. Moving on. You're just going to take, you know, a little circular piece. And honestly, you could use any, you could use a lid of this, you know, put some tape on it. But we're going to use this and then we're just going to cut out a little, you can cut out a circle, you can cut out a triangle, whatever you want to cut. Just cut a little piece out, obviously bigger than the little round piece. And if you pay attention, like these are actually very similar feeling to the makeup sponges. Okay. You could easily line that sucker. What is that? What kind of shape is that? <laughs> like an egg it's not very round brandy all right here we go so if you feel these these are really similar to makeup sponges so if you can't find a makeup sponge like I couldn't today you can create your own we're going to just put a little bit of glue on here hold on a second is this warmed up let's check this out let's not burn myself oh I think I put way too much on there that just came flying out let's see if it burns through if it burns through, I'll make another one. It's not a big deal. But, all right. That, that worked out well enough for me. I'm happy with that. Okay, so now we have our own little DIY foam pouncer that we created here. So let's put that there. So to make sure that you guys can make decisions based on the results before we go applying any of these, I'm sectioning all of these off so we can use the same stencil with the same color with each different thing that we have here to apply and without any without any of the pieces that we can put over to help reduce bleed through i want you guys to have an idea of a sponging technique without having to apply this and what it looks like with each individual item and make a decision based on that and then I want you guys to be able to see the results based on using these. And that way you'll have more information at your fingertips about stenciling and what's going to work for you, along with what you might already have in your house to be able to do. This. Let's use this tea rose color. It's a matte finish. It's an acrylic paint. It's a folk art. You should be able to pick this up at any of your local stores like Walmart, Michaels, Hobby Lobby, and if not, I'm sorry about that, but that's what we're using today for our demonstration, okay? I dropped it low for y'all. <laughs> we're going to do the loading, offloading method here, which is just basically like you get some on there. You know what I mean? Oh, that got blurry on y'all, my bad. You load some on here. You feel me? Get it nice and sopped up. And then you're going to tap, 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 tap. And just keep on going and get all the fray bits because, you know, this wouldn't be the DIY struggle without frayed crusty bits coming out your sponge or out your paintbrush. 
tapity tap and just tap as much as you want so honestly it's almost kind of dried out the more paint you have on this sucker the more chance you're going to have of it smooshing underneath your stencil let me move the camera now to save on time i'm not going to do that load and offload method with each thing that we use i just want to show it to you with the first one and then you guys will have the idea we're going to load and offload with each and every piece that we're going to be applying with okay so for this one we're just going to do the tappity tap 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 and stipple and we're going to do this all over the whole piece quick One thing I am almost certain you never ever see me do in the videos, look at me letting you in my little backdoor secrets. I, if I'm using the same stencil and it has different things like this where I'm not going and washing in between, so you've already got smushed bits on the back of this, right? Look at that. Turned out pretty good, right? We didn't have nothing on there. So there's already smush bits around the edge. If I go to press this down, it's going to instantly leave marks. We don't want that. So I'll take a paper towel, I'll place it down, and then I'll just gently press and get extra paint off. Now, if you really want in between your going in between as you're going, go wash it, have at it. Okay, usually this works for me. I just take it smoosh the back of the stencil around to get any extra transfer off that smushed underneath of there and then roll on let's go ahead oh no i lost the other half of my painter's tape stick that sucker back on there okay next let's use our pouncer and i'm just going to keep going i'm going to speed this up as we go through the process and i'll label them so you guys can see them results we have our stipple okay with this brush all right and then we have our pouncer we have our little foam piece right here we have our sponge right here and then we have our swirl and that's using one of these rounded type brushes and you just swirl around with the brush as you can see you get a really nice stencil design using any one of these and as you can see down here i did a lot of offloading okay there is not a lot of paint as i was showing you on each thing that we were applying which really, 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 really helps reduce bleed through without having any of these on here to protect For this you. part of the demonstration, we're going to be using each one of these to show you how it will help you reduce bleed through. We're going to use the polycrylic glass because this needs to be done in like a well ventilated area. You should have a respirator on all things, but I have people asking if you can use this and you absolutely can. I just do not use it as often as I used to, and it really depends on the surface. If I'm doing it on top of a desk or on top of an end table or something like that, you're going to want to use this because it's going to give you the best wear finish, okay? It just holds up really, really well, but we're going to do this one last. And since my permanent marker was bleeding a little bit, we're going to do pan now for the stencil portion we're just going to use these little paw prints i thought these would be nice they would show up really well we're going to make sure that we tape this down now when you're doing this you want to absolutely make sure that that stencil is not going anywhere and it is taped down really well taping the stencil down stops the ability for this to kind of pop up 
Now what we're doing with all of these little mediums we're going to be using, including the white paint, and you can see I already painted this section white here, is we're going to do a top layer over this before we put our stencil color in. What this is going to do is any of these little sections that are raised, it's going to smoosh underneath of it. So that way it's going to prevent once it dries and it's going to dry clear. So it's going to be the color of our wood. So once it's smooshed underneath of there, it stops any gaps from forming anymore. See how we have them. Flop it, flop, flop. You can definitely see the gaps. This is going to seal all of that. And that way our paint only goes over the stencil portion of our wood piece. And you can use really whatever you want to apply this. It does not, if you want to use a sponge, you want to use a paintbrush, I usually honestly just paint it on. And a lot of times I'll do like two layers. I like to do two layers mostly because in case it didn't smoosh underneath every little section, I know that the second layer is going to solve anything that the first layer didn't. In addition to that, you have to wait for each layer to dry. And waiting for it to dry is definitely the worst part, but by far amazing results come out of it. And since I already showed you the results for like all the little pieces and stuff like that, I'm just going to use the pouncer for the rest of the video. And I'm going to use blue let's use a dark blue so you guys can really see whether or not it bleeds and if it did what i did wrong so you guys can learn from the mistakes and you guys can make beautiful stencils nothing changed in terms of how we loaded our little thing the only thing that changed was how we put our medium in here to stop the bleed through then we're just gonna tap it tap 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 all over the sucker and until you're happy with it obviously sometimes it looks really nice faded in different sections gives a really nice gradient to your paint but for this i'm just and please mind if i go around the stencil a little bit obviously that's not on purpose but since i'm trying to show you guys the results here and you do not have to wait for your paint to dry usually this comes out pretty flawless without having to wait. Look at that. I applied two coats on each one of these, including the one with the white paint for you guys to check out the results. And now I'm just going to use the pouncer on all of these so you guys can make a decision on what you think about the stenciling method. Let's start pulling these suckers off. Here is the deco art. The Dixie Bell, and I've used this several times. Here's our white paint. So if you don't have any of these mediums or you're doing a painted surface and you don't want to have any clear residue around the color of your stencil, just take whatever color. So if this was black, if this was brown, if this was orange, you just take that and you go right over top the stencil and then you apply your color and it turns out beautiful. I don't recommend the glue. This has been mentioned to me about can't you use the glue? Yes, you can. I would only say use it on a craft project. It still is going to help give you, see it's a little bit more blurry than the other ones. And I'm not sure if that's just cause it's glue really, but I mean Mod Podge is kind of just glue. So, but my big thing is we're not sure how that's going to wear. We're not sure how that's going to last. We're not sure about sitting things or anything like that on top of this. So if it's a little craft project, sure, glue in a pinch will work if you want to help minimize bleed through when you have that laying around. And then here is our poly, which I have also used this a bunch of times. And we got, oh, I think I missed one. <laughs> I think I only did these two. 
Yeah, I think I missed that one. I was in a hurry. I was like, yeah, I missed that one. Forget it. We'll pretend that one doesn't exist. <laughs> the other two turned out really good. Okay, now here are our results for our stencil in terms of using a medium to help stop bleed through. I'm going to give you all some close up. Here's the Mod Podge and the Deco Art. Both look really good. Harley's huffing in the background, so if you hear that noise, she's... Man, she always gets mad whenever I'm filming, <laughs> so please excuse her. Here's our Dixie Belle and our paint. I think both of these turned out really good. You can see our paint's still a little bit wet over here. And I'm just gonna put my finger over that one. <laughs> but here's our glue and our poly. Welcome to my kitchen. We are going to clean up two of these that are still a little damp. And I brought this old joint because I've had people ask, how do I get these clean if I let them sit and get on here? We're just going to use them using seventh generation dish soap and some warm water. And that's all we're going to do. You can just put them in there if you want. I'm going to take a little bit and squirt on here. We're going to clean it up. See, I just squirt the dish soap on here and we just put a little bit of water in here. And I'm doing it like this just because I feel like you'll be able to see it better versus me doing it in the sink. And you can see it's literally... Just coming right off and it's going to be super nice and clean and you can reuse these as much and you're going to be able to do the same thing even if it's dried out like this one I'll show you in just a second we're going to kind of submerge it if you have little silver tins you know bacon tins you can put it in there here's our other two that I just cleaned up and you know you just let them sit in here for a couple minutes that hot water and just so if you use Dawn, I know Dawn is like a miracle worker. A lot of people love that. That's fine. I just happen to have seventh generation. It's one of the products that we use often in my house and what I have around the sink. So I'm just going to let that soak for a second. And that's been on there at least two weeks. So just to give you an idea, like it's not like this has not been sitting. It is. And you can just see it's easily coming off just washing with my finger now i can't say anything about ugh, the lawn i can't say anything about um the dollar tree ones and little green ones they wipe up but the material obviously gets a little bit more flimsy and here we go here is the final result obviously you know the more you scrub them extra little bits will come out of there and if you rinse this off as soon as you use it because the paint is absolutely fresh it's going to really wipe off i hope this answers a lot of questions as well as a lot of the stenciling information i hope this helps you guys make better decisions with your stencil diys and that's going to be it for this tutorial until next time people